Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you how to apply conditional formatting to reporting services reports. What you'll learn in this session is all about conditional formatting in reporting services. We'll start by showing you how to use expressions to create conditions and then we'll talk to you about a simple example of changing colors using the if function. We'll move on to a slightly more complex example using the switch function to calculate different ranges of colors. We'll show you how to create alternating row colors with perhaps the most awkward expression in the, in the tutorial. And um, finally, we'll talk to you about how you can use expressions to format text as well. So let's get started. One of the most common ways to apply conditional formatting in reporting services is using an if function to check whether a condition is true and if it is, applying a format. So for this example, we're going to work out if our film's box office dollars is greater than its budget and then we'll choose to apply a green colour to the row of cells. So to get started I'll need to head back to the design view and then I need to select the range of cells that I want to format. Ideally at this point I'd be able to right click and select text box properties but unfortunately when you have more than one cell selected that option is not available. So instead I'm going to use the properties window over at the right hand side of my screen and find the background colour property. If I click on the drop down arrow next to that property, rather than selecting a standard colour, what I'm going to do is choose the expression option. And this will display the expression dialog box, which I can use to build up my calculation. I'm going to start by deleting the colour that's in the dialog box already. So if I select the white fill colour, I can remove that by deleting or backspacing it out. And the next step is to find out which function I'm going to use to test my condition. Now if you've seen our video on calculated columns before, you'll be familiar with the common functions list. If I expand that list at this point, you'll also have seen the program flow category. If I select program flow, I'll find the if function sitting in there. If I double click the if function, or technically the if function I suppose in reporting services, it will type in the syntax of the if function for me. I'll also see an example down here in the bottom right hand corner, which explains how the if function works. So normally you're testing if a condition is true and then you're, you're providing some kind of constant as the answer so it's some kind of piece of text or number or, or even another expression. In our case the expression, the, the, the logical test will be very similar to what's shown here except that ours is going to be based on testing one field against another. I can find the list of fields in the category list as well on the left hand side and then I need to simply double click on one of the, the fields to type them in. If I double click film box office dollars and then I can type in a greater than symbol and then I can double click the film budget dollars field. So that's my logical test if box office is greater than budget. I can then type in a comma and it's at this point I need to choose which colour I want to use. So to do that I'm going to use the constants list if I select constants from the category panel on the left, I now get the choice of a colour that I want to use. I'm going to pick this fairly pale green colour. If I select a colour, it types in the, uh, the keyword required to generate that colour in the report. If I type in one more comma, I can now choose what colour my cells should be if their box office takings is not greater than their budget. I could just choose white if I didn't want to, to sort of show any sort of format, but in this case I'm going to choose this pale pink colour. If I finally close a set of round brackets to, uh, to complete the function, I can choose OK, and then finally preview the report. And hopefully at this stage I'll now see clearly which films have made more money than they cost and which films haven't. Using if functions is great when you want to create one of two different colours, but if you want to create a whole range of colours you need to use something else instead. Uh, so what we're going to do this time is grade our films by how long they last in minutes. So the shorter film will have a, a lighter colour and longer films will have a darker colour. To do that we're going to use the switch function. So back to the design view and we'll select the entire row of data again and in the properties window we'll find the background colour property. We're going to use an expression again to do this and in the expression builder when it appears we'll look in the common functions category for the program flow section. In there we'll find the switch function. 
Now if I double click the switch function that will feed it into the expression builder for me and now I have to build up pairs of arguments. If you've seen the previous video that we've uh, we've done to do this you'll be aware of how this works. Um, if not then what you need to do first is create a simple logical test. So the first logical test I'd like to perform is is the film runtime in minutes less than 100? So field's film runtime minutes value less than 100. If I type in a comma now if that's true, I'd like to display a certain colour. So in the constants category, I can select which colour I want that to be. There we go, light steel blue. Now from this point on in the switch function, everything else works in exactly the same way. So it's one logical test and then one answer. So logical test, colour. If I type in a comma, then look for the fields category, film runtime in minutes, and I want to check if that is less than 150. And if that's true from the constants list, I'll pick some sort of middle blue. I forgot to type in my comma there actually. You see I've got the, uh, the squiggly red underline there between the, uh, the arguments. I forgot to add the comma after my first argument. If I type in another comma then, I can have another logical test. And this is, is the film runtime in minutes less than 200. And then another comma. And if that's true, I'll pick an even darker blue. And then finally, for everything else, for everything else that doesn't match one of our existing logical tests, I'm going to use the value true, which will encompass everything else. And then if that is true, I'll show um, a really dark blue. Close around brackets, choose OK, and let's have a look at the results of this report. So we should find that the longer the film lasts, the darker the background colour. It's quite a neat effect, really. Using a slightly geekier expression, we can calculate alternating row colours for a table. Now, this technique relies on working out what the row number of each row in the table is, and then finding out whether or not it's divisible by two. So, if I highlight the entire row of data and in the properties window, I'm going to find the background colour property and then use the expression builder again. I'm going to start by entering the if function. So in the program flow category, I can find and double click if. And then what I want to do is use a function called row number, which I'll find in the miscellaneous category. The row number function requires one argument, which is its scope. So, so what, what, what object am I calculating the row number for? If I use the word nothing, that will simply mean that row number calculates uh, the value for, for the table that it belongs to. What I'm trying to do then is work out whether that row number uh, leaves any sort of remainder when it's divided by 2. So to do that I'm going to use the mod operator, or modulus operator, um, mod 2, so what's the remainder of dividing row number by 2, and if that is equal to 0, then I know it must be an even numbered row. So that's the logical test. If I type in a comma then, I can choose what colour I want the row to be. So I'll, I don't know, I'll go with a, a pale blue for, uh, for even numbered rows and a comma and this lovely pale pink colour for odd numbered rows. If I close around brackets and then choose OK and then preview the report, what I want to find is that odd numbered rows are pink, even numbered rows are blue. You can probably pick slightly better colours yourself, but that's the principle at least. It's not just background colours that you can calculate using expressions either. Almost every property of a cell in a table can be calculated using an expression. Probably the easiest way to demonstrate this is to actually go into the formatting uh, or the properties dialog box for a cell. If I right click on the actor's name text box and choose text box properties and have a look for instance at the font tab you can see that virtually every font property has an expression builder option right next door to it so I can calculate the font typeface used the font size whether it's bold or italic etc etc all based on expressions as a silly example maybe we'll calculate the um, the, the size of the font so if I click the FX button here you can see that the standard um, way that a font size is provided is with a number followed by the, the letters PT, for point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the font size equal to uh, the, the length of the actor's name. So I can do that really straightforwardly by, uh, 
by simply using the len function. So in the common functions category, there's a text category, and there there's a len function which gives you the length of the piece of text. So I'm going to go for the len of the actor's name, so that will provide a number for me, and then I need to join on or, or concatenate the letters PT. So the ampersand joins on the next piece of text, and because PT is literal text, it must be enclosed in double quotes. So as I say, it's a silly example, but if I click OK and OK again, and then preview the report, you can see that the longer the actor's name, the bigger the font size is. There must be a use for that somewhere. Perhaps if we did the inverse, it makes it easier to, to fit text to smaller boxes. So the longer the name, the smaller the font size, perhaps. Although that's something you can play around with for yourselves. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.